Hello, welcome again to Espresso Live uh, on our program of Spotlight. Today we have with us Mathieu Laurent from Vanuatu Poultry. He will be talking to us and having a conversation about his business. Uh, Vanuatu Poultry, as you all know, they are supplying a big supplier of Obamache with uh, eggs. So yes, we are very interested and uh, very happy that you're here with us today. Thank you for coming you. and uh, uh, having this conversation with us today on uh, business in Vanuatu. So Thank yes, you. please uh, introduce yourself to our audience. So I'm Mathieu Laurent. Um, I was raised and born in Vanuatu. Um, I started my poultry business uh, in 2015 mm -hmm. when I was 20 years old. Um, we, we started the business really softly and slowly and um, today we, we are the major producer of uh, Vanuatu in eggs. So, yeah. So it's been how many years so far? Seven. So it's been um, uh, can, uh, six, about seven years now. Seven years. Yeah. Can you tell me about the, um, your idea? Who inspired you to start this business? So I studied construction, really, <laughs> and I'm selling chicken today. But uh, so I, I um, my, my sister started doing it uh, with a husband. And then um, I, I was working for one of my friends, Pierre-Henri, mm -hmm. for a year when I finished my studies. And I came back uh, and worked a year for him, but my, my dad got sick. And I had to stop working with uh, Pierre Henry, and, and I had to to do to go and have um, look after my father's business because he had to go in New Caledonia. Then um, after this period was done, um, my sister proposed me to purchase uh, purchase uh, their business of uh, meat chicken first. Okay. So that was um, uh, just um, a meat uh, meat bird production uh, was not eggs, a and we started. Um, I had no money, so I borrowed money from my mom. And then I, I made business, um, I took over my business, uh, my sister's business, mm -hmm. uh, with the borrow of my, my mom's money. So she, my, my mom worked uh, for um, um, the VAT office for several years, and it was the money from uh, um, Severance. Oh, okay. So, so you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky, but it was quite tricky because um, uh, it was a, a savings kind of. Yeah. So I couldn't afford to, to not make that money do more income or even refund her that money, you know? So I, I had quite a bit of pressure on me. Mm -hmm. um, but I started like this and then I took over my sister's business, um, a part of it, which is, was the meat bird. And then, um, uh, so I started it and we were growing chicken ready to sell into uh, all the like uh, butchery and stuff. Mm -hmm. and. I didn't know nothing about the chicken, and of course I did all the mistake I could. Okay, okay. So end up uh, having all my nearly half of my birds dying. Um, no money, mm -hmm. couldn't pay for my workers, uh, couldn't pay for electricity, couldn't pay for my car fuel. Even sometimes I had a big issue. Uh, okay. So for for three months I was crying uh, in in uh, in the shower by myself. Um, <laughs> because the, the worst was like I was lying to my mom that uh, my mom was asking me hey son how, how's thing going mm -hmm. and I was like oh everything is good but actually I didn't know how to tell her like I wasted your money oh my God. so it was quite a bit of money that she lent it to me and it was all the savings <laughs> so yeah um, at that point I was down and I, I didn't know how to come back mm -hmm. and I just said look Matt you're already at the bottom what could you do like mm -hmm. you just can go back up yes, like yes. So slowly, uh, slowly, slowly, I couldn't pay my workers. I asked, asked them to if it could wait, and, mm -hmm. and I would pay them a bit later, but I would pay them. So they stayed with me, and the day we work, and then mm -hmm. the, I would start sell the, the, the rest of the chicken that was still alive. We managed to sell it, but at the time I was young, so the butcheries and stuff like that, they were like telling my, 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 uh, my sister's husband, like, why did you sell the business to that guy? He doesn't know how to do this. Yes, so. yes. My, my bird was not on time, so they were, you know, so yeah. it was quite of a pressure on me. And I was only 20 years old, no, no experience. But, yeah, so slowly I, 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 I deal with the little bird that I had. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I sell those birds, the money comes in, I pay this one. Like, it was daily cash, oh, like, okay. daily cash. cash. Flow, cash flow. The cash flow was like daily. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, slowly I went back up and then I managed to 
to increase production and, and, and get back on my feet. And, and two years later, we, we, we multiplied the, the, the original uh, amount of bird that we're producing for when we purchased from my sister mm -hmm. by five times. So we, we grew up fast, and at that stage, we, we started to see that uh, business was going good. Yeah. Um, and then we, we purchased the other part of my sister's farm, okay. so which is the uh, eggs ah. side of the business. And then um, after that, we, we grew like 12 times bigger than when, when we started. Uh, so in, in only, in only three, three or four years' time, we grew 12 times bigger when that at the beginning we, we were at, you know, like sales, sales-wise. So... After that, like, um, so it's been a few years, we've been going on and everything was going fine. So 2000, so we, we had, we borrowed some money after that from the bank and mm -hmm. stuff and everything was going fine. And it was quite complicated because we, I didn't have the cash to, to purchase the upfront things. Mm -hmm. So while I was going, I was purchasing stuff and, and going slowly up and, you know, and, and so uh, 2019, we, we made big investment. We were like, Okay, 2019 is our last big investment, and 2020, mm. we're gonna have the fruit of it, and that's it. We are done with uh, investment. 19, huh? Yeah, so big investment 2019 and 2020. So 2000, um, April 2020, we were meant to have like a new flock laying with yeah. the investment we did. Yeah. Uh, more, more eggs, more birds, yeah. and everything would be good, you know? So in March 2020, COVID arrived. Oh close of borders and stuff like that. So one month before we started to have this, oh, you know? Okay, okay. And then after that, everything just go wrong <laughs> again. <laughs> everything again will go wrong again. And, and we had imported eggs that kind of destroy our business. We were in competition with Chico Farm. It was quite complicated for both poultry business, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, but today, borders open again and, and we start to sell eggs again and everything start to run back. So we have hope. And, mm -hmm. and we see that the money start to flow again in the country and sales are going well. Okay. So we, we're ready and pumped again to, to start off. Very optimistic now? Yeah, so we, we, know, we know now the business. We know what, where not to go and what to do yeah. uh, with all the mistakes we did, of course. Um, as I said, I was a builder, not a mm -hmm. chicken sure, farmer. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, now we, we, we're really pushing hard and, and we're trying to get that level back. So my, my, we, my parents always, my, my dad, we, we grew up in a farm, really. Yeah. Uh, my had, dad had cattle, a bit of chickens, uh, pigs, uh, goats, uh, sheep, everything. So I, I, I was quite confident with, with animals, you know. So I was like, okay, well, if it's working for my sister, then, you know. And, and I didn't know it was that technical, actually. Yeah, okay. So I, I learned all the, the little things like their sickness, their what mm -hmm should be avoid, uh, you know, so, and then once we got, I, I got that then. Could, could you tell me what's so special about the poultry industry here in Vanuatu? Is there anything that's different from other industries? Mm, I would say it's, it's not really, it's not really different. It's more complicated. complicated. It's more complicated because Look, um, for example, our f we, we order feed from overseas, obviously. We, we don't produce our own feed. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have enough raw material to, do, to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, um, we, so we depend on overseas uh, feeding mm -hmm. um, and depend also on, sh on, on shipping schedule. So mm -hmm. when the ship are late, then your, po your bird could be dying of like, not mm -hmm. having yeah. feed, you know? So it's, it's quite of a logistic to, to manage that. And we also need some replacement birds um, every every six months or whatever. And 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 when we have the meat bird production, it's we receive eggs weekly from New Zealand. Mm. So when we had COVID and stuff like that, um, this was complicated for us as we don't have it on site, yes, you know. Yes. So it, it's a bit more tricky because we we in Vanuatu. Mm. Uh, if we were in New Zealand, where they produce the chicks there, and then you have the feed produced there, mm. then it's easier. But in Vanuatu, it's a bit more tricky. So your logistic need to be really set because. Do you think you'd expand into those areas later on in the future to yes. produce? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, yes, we do. We we already we already did. Um, but it's a big it's a big uh, process that we need to see with the government of Vanuatu, because for example, a, a feed a feed uh, meal doing a feed meal is obviously like a lot of money, like oh, a big okay. big amount of money. And we need to set the farmers to produce what we need, oh. 
So it's a big process. To, I'll teach them to maybe plant some new product mm -hmm. for the feed industry, like corns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's not just depending on us because we need to to, to create those raw material here, yeah. and we need to teach our farmers how to do it, and then we can put. It, otherwise, it will be imports from overseas and just mixing in here. Yeah. Uh, you but have to create a huge network. It's a big network. Yeah, even like if you want to. Uh, produced by of obviously like uh, Villa, Paul Villa will not be enough just to supply the feed we need. Yeah. Um, we will also have to uh, have outer islands, so you need to organize transport and shipping, and right. you know because um, yeah, it's it, the feed is quite is quite um, tricky because you need everything uh, consistent with the feed mm -hmm. to be to do for the bird to grow um, same like properly. Mm -hmm. So nothing can be mixed like. Today we mix like this, tomorrow we mix like that. Oh Everything needs to be same. constant That's every right. time. Yeah, yeah. So for example, when we have uh, uh, rough sea yeah. and we cannot bring some stuff that we produce, for example, in Santo or whatever, whatever, yeah. then we're missing things here. So we need to organize it. It's a big organization mm. and, and, and can make it work. I think if you were to make it work, it would be an advantage for you as your, like for your business? It, it will be an advantage for me. Um, Yes, because I guess it will reduce cost by a little bit, not not much, because um, uh, most big things uh, will be have to be imported still, okay. but it will be a big um, impact on uh, the Vanuatu economy, okay. because it will um, it will help a lot of farmers and 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 yeah, it l we 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 spend a lot of money sending our our money overseas to bring feed. Yes. If this money is used here then it creates a lot of opportunity, a lot of jobs, and a big economy boost. And what do you think about, um, tell us about the market here. Uh, you only supply to Obamoshe. Is the yes, competition so, so here? So what we is we it we like? Had we had a bit of a competition with uh, Chico Farm for for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, but um, sadly, they, they closed down. Mm -hmm. So now the uh, market is open for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we, we are expanding in, in that market. But it's taking, the, the, there is process because you need to, to grow birds to be able to have eggs and stuff like that. So, so now the market is open and, and we, are, we are doing what we need to do. Are you uh, selling in uh, Santo as well? Um, Outer Island? Um, Chico Farm was doing that. Okay. So, so now we, we're looking into doing that, but maybe next year. Next year, yes. Okay. And does, uh, okay, so here we are a marketing company here. Yes. How do you do your marketing usually? So um, normally we don't do much marketing okay. because we have our set clients okay. and, and, when, and we've been working with them for years and what we produ produce just go straight to them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, people come to us mm -hmm. because uh, obviously Beaumarche is the biggest uh, supermarket. Yes. So when they see our, our dozen eggs there, mm -hmm. they call, reach out to us. But at the moment, we, we only supply Beaumarche. So we send them back to Beaumarche and just grab the eggs there oh. for, for now because, yeah, we, we can't fulfill the demand yet as Chico Farm just, um, just closed down uh, last month. Mm -hmm. So it's quite early yet for us to be able to supply the full demand. You're still uh, getting ready? Uh, yeah, we're getting ready. we we preparing the sheds. we ordering chicks. We, yeah. And um, I'm interested in how you deal, not, not deal, but you seem to have a good relationship with your employees where they stuck with you throughout like a very difficult time. How yes. did you have, how did you get that kind of relationship with your employees as a boss? Well, uh, for me, for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a local uh, Nivanuatu, so I treat them like kind of my family, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like this and, and yeah, we've been working like this and, and whenever they need help, I help them because I know they help my business. You know, if they was not, they were not here, then I wouldn't grow. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but uh, I have to say that um, uh, some of my best employee went to RSC, which is which is, I'm happy for them. You know, yeah. like they ask me, like, look, I want to go, I I want to make more money, and I said, I understand. I cannot pay you more. Like, you know, it's it's business, but I'm happy for them. So those employee goes, and and. That's 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 complicated because some of them they are they are my supervisors and stuff yeah. like that, but when they come back they come back and work for me so I'm still happy with with that you know. You have a way of um, keeping the good employees that you have already and satisfying their needs more than just money. Um, yeah, well, as I said, like 
But usually the, the needs is money, you know, like uh, usually that's the, the need there. So sometimes some of them, like the parents are sick in the islands and they ask me money, so I, I lend to them and sometimes they need my truck to do this or do that. And mm -hmm. so I always trying to help the way I can, you know, but um, it's, it's tricky because um, you need to help them in a way that you can't give too much either because you can't do that for the whole yeah. employee. So it would be unfair just to give everything to one person, yeah. and when the other one asks, you can't. So it, it needs to be shared, if, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And what advice do you have in terms of like putting in it when uh, when you do business, putting your money in a way where you have a good return on your money? So with our business, we 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 don't have like w what we do is is just that. We know that if we produce, then we get money. So that's normally where we put our money. You know, we we don't try to to do several things. We we focus on on what we need because now uh, we have a big demand. Yeah. So we are just always focusing on that. So and we know that's working. So we, we we don't we don't play around everywhere with money where we put a bit here, we put a bit there. No, we we really focus on that, and and that's where we want to go. So shifted from uh, chicken meat to eggs, yes. how did you make that decision to, okay, now I'm ready for chicken eggs? No, so we, 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 we were doing chickens, yeah. and then um, chickens were working good, so my sister wanted to live in Australia, oh, okay. so she said she wanted to sell the farm, yeah. but uh, of course, if you sell the farm, and my farm is next to it, that becomes a threat to my business, yeah. if someone buys it, you know? Mm -hmm. So the best, the, the good idea was for me to buy it, and I'm the only one on supplies, and my only competitor would be Chico Farm. Mm -hmm. Well, if I don't buy that farm, then I have Chico Farm, and I have myself, and I have a new one a coming, new one, yeah. which could be doing what I'm doing now. So the best option was to buy the, my sister's farm. Oh. And yeah, so that's, that's how we did it. Um, what advice do you have on uh, getting good clients and keeping your clients satisfied? For example, you have Aubamache as your biggest yeah. client. Um, how has it been keeping that relationship well? So w when when you you have a client like that, um, obviously they are the biggest, and 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 they have a certain um, how do you say they they have um, um, certain quantity that they want yeah. and and certain quality that they want. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been having a good relationship because the f eggs are always fresh, mm -hmm. and we always fill uh, fill the orders that they need. Mm -hmm. So. That's how I've been going, and then my family has been working with them for years. My f my dad has been supplying like um, vegetable and lemon and stuff like that for them. So we we knew them for quite a while. Okay. So when we went there, and then th th it was the door was quite open for us. Did you have a trial run first with the overmarket? Um, no, because my sister was already ah, supplying, okay. so I just came and took over. What advice do you have for young people who want to get into businesses as big as the poultry um, industry here in Vanuatu? Well, you know, when I started, I never think that I would be there today, like the biggest poultry farm. Um, I, I was just doing my own thing, and, and, and I was looking at those big companies like, how, they, how, how did they manage to do that? When I saw my sales, monthly sales, that when I started it, and and the hard work every day that I was putting it, and I was just like working, working, and I was like, how did those guys become so big, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just work, and one day I turn around, I'm like, oh, frick, yeah, you're here. I'm here, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, it's, it's just like focus on what you're doing, and, and like, you know, when, when, you, when you start business, like a lot of people came to me and like, oh, you know, poultry is just three years time, and everything's gonna sink, and you know? Mm -hmm. and I turned around and I said nothing, but I listened to what they said. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my head, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna show you that what you're saying is wrong mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm gonna prove you. And yeah. that's what I did. So I, I used the negativity to push, my, to push me further, you know? And, and if, you, if you concentrate on that, then you stay in that circle of negativity, which doesn't bring you up. So you need to take this and show them that I will prove you wrong and I will do what needs to be done and I will change things. Do you know some people are really afraid of failure? What do you? What advice do you have for those people? Oh, oh I, f I failed. I failed, and 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 so what? It's it's my it's my knowledge. You know, it, 
at the end of the day, like no one puts any bread on my table. I'm the one making my own money, right. you know? Yeah. So whatever criticisms they, they have against me or whatever, yeah. I, I, I don't take that as, as big as what people should take because then it just affect you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you just do, every experience is a good experience, mm -hmm. good or bad. Mm -hmm. So when you have a bad experience, it's still something that makes you stronger in, the, in your life anyway. Mm -hmm. So you use that as an energy to boost you, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a lesson that you learn yeah. and you know where not to go anymore. Mm -hmm. But if, if you don't have this, then you, you, you don't learn anything. That's the part of the life, you know? So if you're motivated to do something, mm -hmm. just make sure you calculate the yes and the no, like the minus and the plus. Yes. If it's plus, and you show of what you calculate, mm. get a certain amount of what if, what if, what if, right. this right. goes wrong. Uh -huh. And if you minus all of this and it's still in positive, mm -hmm. then go for it. Okay. You know, and take all the risks that can be taken like out of your calculation. And if it's still like, oh, even if I this happen and this happen and this happen, then I still make money. Mm. Then try it, you know? Yeah, nothing to lose, right? When you, ha you, 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 you have things to lose, of course, <laughs> nothing comes with, yes. yeah, but at the end of the day, it's your own experience and, and it's, it's something that teaches you lives and, and that's, that's how it is, so. But speaking of that, um, could you tell me about the support that you have around you um, during that time? Did you have anybody who supported you a lot? Maybe your parents, maybe your... So, so my, my parents were not in... in so I, I would say like uh, in, in terms of uh, logistic and stuff like that, my parents were, were not... Um, were not uh, couldn't be really supportive because they, they didn't have these kind of things before. Okay. Uh, my dad was a farmer, mm -hmm. you know, and my mom was working at the VAT office. Mm -hmm. So all this logistic and stuff, um, I had to manage it myself really. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they were supportive when, when, when I did my poultry. They were like, okay, keep, they, they were pushing me to trying to do stuff. And, and my dad, like, I'm gonna give you an example. And one time I was young, he purchased me a, a quad bike and I fall off the quad bike and I was like bruised and stuff. Yeah. And he said, jump on it again. And I was just, just fall, you know, like yeah, yeah. jump on it again. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped on it and I just run. And then he tell me, it's like, it's not because you fall that you don't go back on it. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, my dad always been like that, so I, I was raised like that, just mm -hmm. to trying to be, always go forward, you know? Kind of a yes. determined mentality yeah. to keep going. Nice. Okay, so uh, we've come to the end now. Um, do you have uh, anything that you have learned so far from your experience up until now that you would like to share with the audience before we close off? Um, yes, something that uh, I'm really grateful and thankful is um, uh, my, 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 my rally driver, okay. is, which is Pierre Henry, yes. you know. Um, that was something that I learned from him. Mm -hmm. He was my first boss. And, and I, had, I had this a bit in me, but uh, the working with him like um, opened my, my fear, you know. Um, so so Pierre Henry is the type of person when I was working for him, I just came out of school and it put me on those big projects, mm. you know? And I was like, oh my God, I, I, I'm scared. It's just like, hey, you can do it. You're, you're not as, you know, if someone can do it, then you can do it, so just do it. And I was like calling him every, every like, hey, there is this, like, okay, it's fine. Just do this, do that. And then slowly I just ending up managing those things. You built the confidence. I became confident with it, okay. you know? And he always had, I, I always see people like sometimes telling like, are you sure what Pierre is doing is going to work or whatever? Mm -hmm. And all his project work. Yes. You know, true. actually, he look at Tanarusse, look at things like that. It's, yeah. it's. So he shows me this fear, mm -hmm. um, like he shows me not to have this fear, and then just like if you think of this and you go for it, then do because he was the the life proof yes. of that. You know, so that mm -hmm. was I was like, yeah, they always take talking, telling that this is go not going to be working and stuff, but then do some so beautiful project that always work, yeah. you know? So yeah. I learned from that and I, I was lucky to work. I just had one year to work with him, mm. but I, I learned so much. And, and, and that first experience of the job that I had yeah. opens up my mind. And that's why I was like just pushing because I saw what could be done and I, and I saw what, what you think can be done can be possible because he did it, mm. you know? So I was like, that's my turn now. Nice. 
Okay, well, that's where I want to go and that's where I'm, I'm going and, and, and I will go there, no matter what. Saying to the audience that anybody could do that if they have that kind of mindset. That's why I'm saying um, you need to really calculate the plus and the minus okay. because just don't go like, okay, I want, I want to be an astronaut, that's it. I'm going to the moon. Like, <laughs> no, 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 there is, no, there no. is way to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. make sure like business-wise to make a proper plan, mm -hmm. um, make a little survey mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and calculate the, 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 the finance that needs to be on it. Um, what I do usually is that I calculate whatever finance I need on it and I times it by two. Okay. At least you know that yes, if the biggest thing yeah, happened, yeah, yeah. then you still covered, you know? Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, just a lot of calculation and, and, and if you think that's right, then go because no one else will do it for you. And in life, you're better off having um, regrets than in French we say remords, mm -hmm. you know? So you're better off like, ah, oh, I did it, but I shouldn't have. Yes. Instead of, ah, oh, I should have, you see what happened now? Like, yeah, I don't like this, yes, yes, I don't like that. Yes, yes. If, if I think I should have, I should do that, then I do, because otherwise I might regret that I should have done it, you know? Mm. Mm. But then again, it, it depends on, you need to scale, you know? Yes, it, you can't just jump into something yeah, that yeah. you can't uh, already uh, tack, tack so, so, so in, in my business, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, for example, like I said, the logistic and stuff, I, I learned a bit with Pierre-Henri. But um, doing my uh, doing a, um, a studies in in construction, we had numbers like we, we were doing dealing with numbers. It was just like every day, every day numbers, numbers, numbers. So when I did the poultry, those numbers, those construction numbers, was just becoming accounting. Oh, you know, yeah. so I just you, I just used the numbers because I knew the numbers, mm -hmm. and I just put it towards accountings, and mm -hmm. that's why. I could have come because our study in, in construction was quite pushed in, in mathematics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So accounting is just mathematics. So I just use that. Yeah. Not intimidated by that at all. Mm. Nice. Okay. Um, please tell the audience where they can find you. Maybe if you have a Facebook page, somewhere they can reach out to you, or maybe just tell them to go to Um <laughs> for, for 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 our product, then just go to the Beaumarchais. But if if you have any any um, uh, questions that uh, you want to ask me, just send me a message on my messenger and I will be happy to help whoever needs help and, and if a question I need to answer, then yeah. You are Mathieu Laurent on Facebook? Yeah, I am. I have uh, his Facebook uh, and links down below. And uh, also uh, go to Obamasha to check out their products. They're really, really good. Um, and I'm sure everybody else already knows <laughs> your products from Obamasha. So um, thank you again, everyone, for another episode of Spotlight. And thank you, Matthew, for coming today. Thank you. It was very short notice, but you made it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And uh, we'll see you again uh, next week on another edition of Spotlight, uh, powered by Espresso. Goodbye. Thank you.